Rodrigo uh, uh, Ishani Anand. Uh, she's a GS student and Oxford student. She joined in 2020. And uh, in first attempt, she was not able to clear uh, prelims. And in the second attempt, she got a very good mark in mains. Her mark was higher than all India 20 first rank. But because of optional, she was not able to clear uh, mains. And third attempt, she got into near revenue service with the three hundred first rank. And uh, this is her fourth attempt. And uh, she got into a 79th rank okay, so this year. So she will get into near administrative service. And uh, this is a brief introduction about the uh, So in today's session, uh, briefly first she will explain about uh, her journey in the civil service of the operation. And uh, mainly we are expecting more number of questions from students. Okay. Thank you, Ishani, for accepting our invitation. Thank you so much, sir. <laughs> Hello everyone, how are you all feeling? Are you tensed? No? All the no's, preparation is going good? Yeah? But how many are writing 24 this year, this prelims? Can you raise your hands please? Okay, and uh, 25 next year? Okay, so it's almost a mixed batch. Uh, I'll try to keep the session um, along basic contours of some problems that we'll all be going through and then I'll open the questions to everyone. Uh, so I have written the exam four times and I'm a computer science engineer by profession and I have taken anthropology as my optional. Uh, after my engineering I could have taken a job in IT. I did have a good package but I think I wanted an occupation where I had a very broad perspective of things, uh, something to do with people, something a bit more on the field uh, because I felt that my uh, mental faculties were more related to what people wanted to feel. So I felt like I wanted to do civil services. Uh, but today I'll talk about some of the problems we all may be facing through and some of some tips that I can give you perhaps with that. A very important problem I think we all go through is having a little impatience and anxiety. Is that correct? Yes. Is that true? Yes. Do you all feel like what will be my rank? Uh, when will this finish? What sources to take? What is that topper saying? Which channel to follow? What sources to do? Uh, but the UPSC is an entity unto itself. Like there is so many sources, so many toppers and so many papers that you will always feel anxious about it. And this is your body's mechanism of actually propelling you to a goal. But what kept me going is a very simple concept called dichotomy of control. Anyone can guess what it means? Dichotomy of control. Dichotomy means two sides of control. Anyone can tell me what that means? No? It's a very important concept. It means that we control a very, very small part of, part of our life. Right? There are nine papers, you have so many competitors. Do you really think that what you envisage is exactly going to happen? It is not in your hands at the end of the day. But only two things you actually control in this exam is your good habits and your emotional quotient. When I said good habits, does anyone know what I mean by this? Just make it a very nice session. Anyone knows what it could mean? Such as three louder, it's okay. Disciplined? Yes, discipline is a very important part of it. Anything else, anyone? Consistency. Consistency. Okay, now tell me uh, things like, things that you do when you wake up. What do you do when you wake up? Who said Instagram? <laughs> so my point being that everyday small habits like good diet, drinking water, sleeping on time, keeping phones away, keeping distraction away, these are good habits. This is in your control. And then the body allows you to reciprocate and show your consequences. You cannot think consistency. You do consistency by waking up every day at the same time. So the only thing you can control is good habits. So for me, in my life, I kept a very small circle of friends 
who were not preparing so they kept me going with a support system so you will have to find those friends or maybe a good support system that motivates you number one number two i changed uh, my, my diet was very controlled i tried to steer away from panic eating or indulgent eating so it was a little more healthy maybe that also we can adapt in our lives and i wouldn't say sleep early wake up early i couldn't do that uh, but you should have enough sleep that fits your body schedule but try to keep a schedule where you wake up and sleep at the same time but my most important habit uh, habitual change was not keeping the phone on me throughout the day you don't need to be on your electronics at all because the medium of upsc is pen and paper so keep your notes with pen and paper maybe if you have digital notes that's also a good habit but keep apps away which you don't need you don't need instagram maybe you don't need facebook these were changes i felt i needed to bring in my life but if you feel that this is not distracting you it's completely fine but i want to tell you that focus means where you place your focus your energy goes there is that true it could be anything maybe you put your focus in uh, relationships or weather or something of that sort but where you place your focus your energy also goes so when you change your habits perhaps your anxiety and patience and your um, and your patience will also increase anxiety reduces so keep this in mind and also remember that everyone goes through anxiety and patience till my results came i was very anxious so always remember that anxiety will be a constant partner but you have better habits you can always improve on that now second thing i want to talk about is a fear of failure do you all have that yes like will you be in the list or will you clear prelims because with this exam every 3 months we have a pdf that decides your fate and if you're not in it you go back to square one that's a fear right you're scared of failure and no matter how much people say it's a stepping stone to success it just doesn't feel right if you feel if you feel like you're about to fail and 24 or 25 whichever attempt you give you will always have a fear of failure anyone has a mechanism of how you overcome anyone do you how do you overcome failure when you feel like okay i'm going to fail today do you have a mechanism no no you fear failure all the time No, I don't. Do you sort of have a belief system, or maybe you talk to your friends or family on how to overcome fear of failure? I will. Yes. I watch web series. You watch a web series? Okay, that's a good way to let go of your anxiety, distract yourself completely. Uh, anyone else? Does anyone watch motivational videos? No. Maybe you can try that also. <laughs> It's a very simple placebo effect. You know, you will feel like you're not the only one. uh but the point i was making is everyone has a fear of failure rank 1 will not know they're going to be rank 1 rank 900 won't know the same so my point is in this exam if you think that you have a map to success immediately that is not the way to think about it this exam is very incremental in my experience i have failed prelims i have failed mains so it has been incremental had i succeeded immediately in my first attempt i feel like i would have fallen much harder so i am happy that i was able to make failure a bit of a companion i accepted that i overcame it and i went forward so fear of failure is something you will always have but always keep in mind that it will teach you a lot in life and your journey will be worth sharing later Uh, I also want to share something that I read about during my preparation. It's a concept called Sthiti Pragya. Does anyone know what it is? It's from the Gita. Sthiti Pragya. No one. So if you break the word, it means situational wisdom. What it indicates is that in success or failure, we maintain equanimity. Does anyone know what equanimity means? Exactly. Sorry, please be louder. Yes so you remain stable and solid from success and failure at the same time like he said you are not overtly emotional or overtly too happy or too sad about things because this exam you need to have a sense of detachment it is not just about you but your work do research a bit more on this concept because it is intertwined with karma yogi philosophy which means your work is what should speak for itself i leave you with this thought just think over it i also want to talk about this word called confusion in the exam maybe when you reach uh, reach out to your mentors you will say sir i'm confused about this can you tell me what you're confused about you cannot be sh- sh- quiet about this because i have been in your place and i was so confused about so many things sources uh, test series a lot of it anything else you're confused about at this moment how to do what to do sorry how to read newspapers that's a confusion 
Anything else? What not to study? A very important uh, thing also. Anything else? Yeah, what to focus more, what not to study, how to study the papers, right? Anyone else from this side? I won't move till you tell me something. Sources, maybe a test series to take. No? These are questions, right, that you all have. It is such a difficult exam because it has so many papers and so many different segments. It is a very warranted topic. Until the end of the exam, you will not know if a strategy is right. But I reconciled by telling myself that I will create my own map to this, to this whole confusion problem. Because any voyage, you need a map. You need Google Maps to come here. You need a map when you're going on a ship. So, for example, um, I was confused because there are so many sources in the market for a particular topic. I will, I will not say that take only one and stick to it. I did this. I took at least two or three. I took a couple of days to understand the whole source and understand if it is if I can understand from it or not. I made very short notes, and by the end of it, I had a very concise piece of notes from the best of best. It is not that the same question came in the exam at all, but I felt happy that I've covered a lot in the market. Maybe you can apply this. Do a very quick exercise of taking many sources and seeing what you like. Trust me, there is always a repetition of everything and everything already. And you will be smart enough to know it. Don't take more than two, three days to just take a glimpse of what you need to be. So the lesson is, you will have a lot of confusion. You make your own map and trust me, stick to it and it will take you where you have to go. All right, we can discuss more on your confusing questions later also after this. Now, a very important fourth point I wanted to talk about is that perhaps we all have a lack of confidence right now. That is the root of everything above, anxiety, impatience, uh, confusion. Do you all feel a little underconfident about which way the exam can go? Do you think about there are so many people writing uh, and uh, is my source okay, is my handwriting okay? How will I do it in those two hours? Yeah? Do you feel like a lack of confidence? Do you ever think why that is there? A lack of confidence. Uh, why do you think you can't do it, even if it's your first or second attempt? Think very clearly. The major problem is you let the external pressurize you so much. You look at some topper doing something, you say, oh, I want to emulate him or her. But he's not you, number one. Second thing is you think, oh, society will think so high of me when I do very well. But it's not for society. Whom are you doing the aerial exam for? For yourself. So have you woken up today and asked yourself internally, why am I doing this exam? How do I want to get there? And what will I achieve? The second you have clarity about your internal solid principles, you will never have a problem of confidence. That is a very important factor. You are letting external pressures get to you. That is why I said keep your phones away, keep a very supportive uh, focus dome around you, keep only people who are motivating you. So this is all tied to the fact that go less external, go much more internal. This will help you face failures, it will help you create your own map. These are good thoughts to keep in mind but you will figure your own way out as to what I mean. Um, also, if you are feeling that maybe my past record in school is not okay, my university is a problem, or maybe uh, my background or something, you may have doubts about it, but UPSC is the ultimate democratizer of everything. Your past CGPA, college, maybe something you've done in college does not matter. It gives you a very new lease of life, something that you can look back and say, no, I'm going to be my own person now. So I want to leave you with the thought that it is a time, it's time to start fresh. Don't get caught in pressure of the exam, it's the end of the world. Don't watch <laughs> aspirants 12th fail and get pressurized or something. <laughs> because it's his journey, yours could be very much parallel but very different also. So I want to leave you with a couple of these thoughts to motivate you because all of us are going to be there very soon. I want to read out a very interesting poem which kept me going. We can all maybe Google it also. It's called uh, Don't Quit by John Greenleaf Whittier. It goes like this. When things go wrong, as they sometimes will, when the road you're trudging seems all uphill, but you can never tell just how close you are, it may be near when it seems so far. So stick to the fight when you're hardest hit. It's when things go wrong that you must not quit. Right? Does that, does that make sense to everyone? Okay, that's it. That's all that I wanted to share with you. And now I'm open to questions that you may have about the exam or anything else. 
did you all understand uh, what i wanted to share with you i hope you're feeling a little better about the exam a bit more prepared just go home with these thoughts and just work hard today can we have questions anyone if you uh -huh. should i go one by one <coughs> no you want to talk about newspaper do you want me to clarify that so um do you have so my first newspaper reading which i started long back had taken couple of hours at least two or three hours because i didn't have the practice uh in the beginning you will take some time to read the paper but the questions don't come directly from the paper alone you have to go to pyqs and see what precedent there is for example if you see science and tech there are questions on genetics maybe something on um, blockchain or something so when these things come in the paper you make a note of it right so there is a prelims component to the papers based on pyq studied like that very selectively you should not take down notes of every article in the paper please don't do that because a lot of the coaching classes um, the and the, the booklets are also compiling the same information second thing is with respect to the editorials you will always get very good points very good uh, numbers and value addition quotes and all of that again don't make a list of every paragraph i would not do that i would read the whole thing i would pick out three most important points put it in my gs 1 2 3 4 5 and then keep it that way so use the paper like a tool it's not supposed to be a burden now but third thing is you should have a cursory reading because the general studies requires you to have general understanding of everything right so you can understand current affairs maybe do some elimination in the prelims based on your reading so be very calculative about the paper there are three components prelims way of reading mains and uh, cursory all these three things are done in the morning when you wake up is that okay okay so one more thing uh, how can we get all this information at the time during the examination of mains information uh, about whatever the current affairs what we have Oh, you mean notes so, making? It's like uh, we need to generate all this points uh, about the newspaper what we have yes. already. Yes. So How to reproduce? It's very uh, difficult for us to reproduce at that. In the paper. So, right. Okay. See, for that one thing is you all should do answer writing practice. Your first answers will be very bad, and then you go back to the bad answer. You go back to your notes and say, "Where can I put this quotation, this statistics? How can I put it there?" After you finish an answer, go back to your notes and do this to your uh, notes that you made, and then you will know how an answer will look nice, right? And this will take you much time in the beginning, and then as you write, it will be your practice. The only way to reproduce good content from the newspapers is by revising what you have already studied. right revising the current affair maybe a quotation or something revise it write an answer piece it together uh, you will like the answer then it will be a part of your practice already but revision is the way out to revise what you made notes of and as of now uh, it's been a three months for me uh, ever since my coaching has been started and what has to be done simultaneously because uh, mm -hmm. i'm just brushing up my notes what i have made uh, made uh, in the classroom as well So what can we okay that's a good question while your classes are happening you have a uh, class notes right they will suffice a very important base at the same time please also study your current affairs magazines maybe you can map the same topic to current affairs magazines and add those topics get what i'm saying so your notes are not just class notes they are very nice notes with value addition also so you can do that and then you revise it again that will help you in prelims and mains so you can do current affairs you have to revise it yourself uh, and then try to do answer writing also if you have a polity class go back the same day uh, for your gs2 there will be a question on basic structure or something and then you on to answer writing practice on that that makes sense okay how should we plan for this given are you writing 24 okay so by now uh, you should have done of course one whole reading of everything and in these two months you should be focusing a lot on csat as well your practice papers you can do weekly ones second you should definitely focus on subjects like modern history polity and geography and environment static subjects if you don't do static subjects it's very difficult to beat the competition right that's current affairs part of it right so i think um, usually one or two months before the exam is not as important for current affairs you can stop it two months but you have to revise your current affairs maybe you can take these two months and keep a big chunk of static like polity modern history in the morning and in the evening practice your current affairs and then to also tests pyqs should be very important part of your i if you've done it before you revise them and you keep revising okay this is how this question was asked and then uh, you will know this is the way it can come in the real paper also pyqs static current affairs in that order you can plan these two months
Yes. For the personality test, um, uh, you mean from one attempt, or you're asking generally for personality yeah. test? Okay, so see, personality tests, they don't check knowledge alone, but they're also checking your logical skills. Today, if you want to improve your personality test, read the editorial, okay, understand it, and try to repeat the same editorial, summarize it, and talk to a mirror. You're building articulation that way, and that practice would help you till the exam. Do it every day in the morning, maybe. Read the editorial, summarize it, and speak it out. The more you speak, the better it is for the personality test. That you can do. Um, I think for now, this is most important because even in the interview, it is you can't predict which way the interview is going, but articulation is very important. So I to do that with your editorials. Any other? Do you have follow-up? Uh, I have some stage view. You have stage view? Um, look at me. <laughs> no, um, you mean to talk to like a group of people? For the personality test, you mean? But see, in the UPSC um, personality test, they make you feel very comfortable. They will talk to you. They will make you very comfortable. It will become conversational at all. And you're the, not the only one facing this. I know people in my own day when they were sweating and their palms were also getting it. So that, that happens to everyone. And these people went on to score really well in the interview also. So it's not just your problem. Articulate. Like I said, you need to have confidence. You are thinking what the examiner is thinking of you, judging you. That's not important now. You have clarity about your views. You want to communicate that. Go only with that idea. Yeah? And then things like breathing five, six times deep in and out. If that helps you, that also you can do. Uh, anyone else? Yes? Uh, what made you consistent throughout the... Um, there are a, a lot of... What he's asking is, how did you maintain consistency? One thing is I had the confidence that I could clear the exam in some attempt. I always felt like there was something unfinished. I hadn't given my best answer. I could do more. I could give better presentation. So I think it was, I felt unfinished a lot in my attempts. Uh, and somehow I'm here today. So I think that was a major factor. I, number two, also I felt like this is a job that I felt is very close to my heart. Like I know I could do well. I would picture myself in the field. I would picture myself talking to people, doing inspections. I knew I could play a good part in policy. Although I don't know so much about it now, but to me, I had imagined a future where I could do it. So when you believe it, it's your body naturally will let you do it also. So you need to become the part, you know, like how Shakespeare says, we are all in a play. That's the concept here also, that you need to play the part, have confidence you can do it, and that placebo will help you going on in life. Uh, that's one answer. I'm sure you'll have your own reasons on how you can be consistent. Uh, anyone else? I did a lot though, because um, one thing is, I was studying alone. I didn't have a peer group. I didn't have a lot of people motivating me, telling me to wake up or someone who was rich. So I did a lot of solitude, solitary studies. Uh, also, it was during COVID-19, both years. So our exams were pushed three, three months, I think six months extra I'd had. And failing a lot of it, having burnout was a problem. I did face a lot of these challenges, which will happen to you. But this is why you need to have good habits. So I took up a new hobby like Rubik's Cube. I would do that. I liked that a lot. I felt it was intellectual, so I took it up. Uh, also, at the same time, I always felt like my productivity was so low. So I kept stressing too much with myself, pushing myself too much, which is also not correct. Because you need to know exactly what's the right effort for the right task. So I think it was very mental, but I tried my best to come here. So these are some of the challenges I had faced. Ma'am, what were the previous mistakes that you rectified? Yeah, so she's asking, uh, what were the mistakes you rectified in your previous attempts? Uh, one, in the prelims, I had studied very hard in my first attempt. Everything was very good. All boxes checked, the sources, so many questions in a day, yet I couldn't clear because I had not given a lot of two-hour exams. But what I mean is that in those two hours, I hadn't strategized that this is how I will go by the paper. This is how I will think. This question I will leave, I will not do. This question is so easy, I can pick it up. This strategy you need to have in your two-hour papers. So in the two months which you're going, give two-hour papers and strategize a lot. What I did, I changed from the two attempts. I would glimpse the whole paper once and I would immediately know that these are the 10, 15 questions I can do. Polity, modern history, geography. And I would do it and I would mark it in the sheet already. This is a set correct questions. I knew this would be correct. 
then a second reading of the not so easy questions and then i would sit and think okay can i eliminate two options and keep two and two this was my second reading and there i would have done another 40 third reading where i can't eliminate uh, i could eliminate only one i had three left over so i fixed strategies like this in my mind and this helped me a lot in my prelims later uh, i also improved my means from one to the other. Uh, in my first means, I was good at anthropology, but I hadn't done a lot of answer writing at all. I hadn't revised so much. I felt I had too many sources. My notes were very bulky. So I think in my second attempt, I didn't change any knowledge per se, but I changed the way I presented my paper. It was much neater. It was much more clearer. So a lot of these things I had changed in my two different attempts. Uh, third one, I don't know what has improved. Maybe later, you know, the marks are out. Anything else? Ma'am, how to maintain the concept clarity because... Uh, uh, hello, ma'am. Oh. Uh -huh. Where are you? Oh. Uh. <laughs> yes, yes. Uh, uh, can you hold on? I just have a doubt here. Ma'am, after completing each subject... Okay. Yes. After completing each subject, when I look back to the first subject which I started, I feel that uh, the concept clarity yes. that I had in the first or the second reading, I, I'm, I'm sort of missing it. Yes. Okay. So he's asking you a very important question. He is saying concept clarity. If you don't have concept clarity, you will go wrong in prelims questions. They are not checking your knowledge. They are not checking mg, c, uh, centimeter, what is this, what is that. They are checking concept. If you know that Jahangir, at the time of Jahangir, paintings were great, that is a very important concept. If you know during Akbar administration, art was great, that is a concept. So. Try to do this, like when you read something, can you summarize the entire concept in one line? How do you associate A to B and make a very small note of it in your notes? Go back to PYQs also. What is the answer for that PYQ in this? And then you will know this is the concept clarity. Maybe you're not having clarity because you have too much content under one particular para and you're trying to mug up maybe. This could be some of the problems. But you need to summarize the whole concept in one line. Does it make sense? Uh, like. Um, Environment topic, there could be some summary, right? For example, in modern, in medieval history, there was a question, under whose reign was painting doing very well or something? In, the, in our book, it is given, Jhangi, Nitin Singhania, so very simple, associate one with the next. In the, in the prelims also, the question will be only on the concept. They will not ask you in detail for other things. You need to eliminate based on this concept, right? So try to do that, try to summarize a bit more uh, and get a better understanding, okay? Uh, we had an online doubt after that. Does anyone have a doubt online? Do you want to go? Do you want to go? you will never have 100% answer. You will never have 100% answer. Because I know a lot of people who made it in the list also tell me, was it right even now? So you will never have 100% answer. But there are some ways to measure. First, do you see an increase in your prelim score? Okay, for a static subject. Is polity increasing? Is modern history increasing? It means you're not doing the same careless mistakes. You're not confusing articles. Static syllabus, is your marks increasing? Is one way to check. Also for CSAT. And number two, for mains, there are very simple things. When they ask a question for mains, your answer should be introduction, very clear introduction, good presentation, conclusion. This is very simple. Show it to people around you and tell them, okay, how is it looking? Is it okay? The more you share your mains answers to people, in my experience, this has worked for me, may not work for everyone else, but the more I have showed people, different types of people, because I knew the examiners will also be different, then you get a better idea of it. Prelims, you can check through marks. Uh, if you do PYQs, clearly you will be on the right track. CSAT papers, you have to practice. You have to see beyond cutoff. And for mains, show it to more people and let them tell you what's going on. Right? Test series is one way to check. But psychologically, emotionally, mentally, you will never know this is the right strategy. Uh, just go with the flow for now. And you will learn in the process itself. Can you share your interview experience? My interview experience? <laughs> uh, so in my previous interview, 
I hadn't given the interview. That was my first interview, so I didn't even know what UPSC looked like. I was very scared when I entered. I think my hands were shaking, but I looked very uh, stable, very strong. But I was very scared on the inside. And then on the way to my room, I had found out who my chairperson was. I went in. I sat there. It was a very big room. Uh, it felt like five people staring at you, like you're some sort of circus monkey. But they make you very comfortable. They make you very comfortable. They want to know more of you. So why? What will they gain? Making you uncomfortable, so they make you very comfortable. They ask your name. You won't even know the interview has begun. That's how it proceeds. And by then, you have prepared so much in GS already. You will know something about something, always. So you say. Uh, so they had asked me about my place of birth was Coimbatore. So they asked me the industry of that place. Uh, why it does so well? What is the issue with environment? The topic went from that to that. And I had put stoicism in my um, hobbies in my DAF. They'd ask me about philosophy, why you like it, how it has helped you. So they wanted to know more of me. Uh, I think she was, then she wanted to the next person. She asked me about the optional, what I thought, anthropology, what I thought about tribes and how I would implement um, solutions for them. It was a bit of on that. And then the next person spoke about cubing, my, uh, my, my timing for cubing and a lot of this. So it was more about me uh, and asked about commonwealth. Also, I had boxing in my as my hobby, so they, someone had asked me about that. Like, what, how do you do it? <laughs> they didn't think I was a boxer, but they did ask me a lot about a lot of good questions. And finally, the fifth person, it was very interesting because we had a very good uh, talk on foreign policy. And that time, G20 was in news, and India was doing very well. Also, in news, uh, we were talking about Vishwa Guru, so I had a discussion about that, and they kept. They did try to pin me down, um, many criticism, India is not doing well, this, this, this. But they're again checking your clarity of thought, which I was talking to you about. Like you have to be convinced about G20, what our role is with Nepal, Bangladesh, because they will try to confuse you. And at the end of it, they were all laughing and uh, they seemed very friendly. And then I went out, I didn't know how it would go, but I think it was okay. And in my second interview, it was much colder in Delhi, <laughs> which I didn't know. It was very cold and then they had uh, expected more from me because I was in service already. So the conversation went around European Union, environmental engineering. It was not from my DAF this time. We spoke about the Indian Revenue Service, digitization of India. At one point, they also felt like they could give me a googly through asking me about movies. We spoke about Bollywood movies at one point, uh, Israel Hamas issue, a lot of it. So I think my two interviews the panel seemed similar, but I had changed a lot as a person. I think that's only because of practice and experience. That was my... <laughs> Thank you. Uh, anyone else? Yes? Yes. Yes, so what happened is, I started in 2019 and I was doing both simultaneously. But then I did not clear my first prelims. So I had to go back and do only prelims for three, four months. I don't know, but for me, because of COVID-19, I had got exam pushed four months and then I started my means. And so what I want to tell you is you should prioritize ethics, essay and optional in those three, four months. Start with that in the beginning. GS, maybe you can push it a little bit later. But with ethics, you should be ready with your PYQs, your topics, how you will answer every question. Ethics is doable if you go to PYQs easily. Optional, you should be very clear with the concept, with important topics and some tests you should have given by then. Essay is a very important paper because two essays can really make it or break it for you, which was my difference, I think, in the two attempts because I didn't score very well in my first, the previous essay. Give practice for that. So I think while I was preparing for prelims, I prioritized these three. And when I cleared prelims, I did a bit more of GS123, and that's when I did the others. This was how my uh, pattern was. But if you are giving 25 or 24? 24? 24? Uh, have you done means also enough? little bit you have touched but focus for now only on prelims finish 24 attempt very well and after you clear hopefully then you can do means and patch the gaps but generally it's always good to do them together okay. yes my individuality <laughs> uh, it's a good question though but um, I think I didn't change myself at all for the exam uh, I developed some qualities and tried to reduce certain qualities that, that was not good in me. But I think I did a lot of reading in my attempts. A philosophy I was reading, I was watching a little web series like she said. So a lot of this did help me. But I think failures taught me a lot in this exam uh, about humility, about rising from the challenges and all of that. So I think just 
stay alert, just stay alive, just stay positive in your life. I think this, you can build your qualities. We all have good qualities in us, so we develop what we have better. Yeah, that's all. What led me to this? What led me? This success, I think failures. As much as I said failures are <laughs> stepping stones and they're not fun, I think failures, no doubt. I'm so happy for every failure because it would have been much more catastrophic if I had cleared everything immediately and suddenly fallen at the end, not knowing which stage I should have corrected. So failure is the most important journey for me. Uh, anyone else? Maybe online? Does someone, does someone have a doubt? Hi, I'm Saraswati here. Hello. Yeah, I have a question regarding optional subject, ma'am. Mm -hmm. uh, during gradu graduation, I took political science mm -hmm. as an honor subject. Mm -hmm. But currently, uh, like when I started preparing for the UPSC civil service exam, mm -hmm. I have more interest towards uh, geography. Okay. So it's quite difficult for me to choose. Uh, I have interest mm -hmm. on geography subject, mm -hmm. but I have. Uh, you know, knowledge on political science subjects. Mm. So, how can I? So, uh, you like geography better than political science? Is that correct? I have. Uh, yes. Yeah, okay. See, first and foremost, I can't make the decision for mm. you now, but I will give you enough clarity on what to do with this problem. One thing is, you should like your optional. You need to have an interest, at least to some extent, that you can understand the concepts because you have to live with the optional maybe for your attempts until you change it but you need to like the optional a bit number two check out the sources for geography and psir and the syllabus when you see the syllabus are you able to write five six points with psir it will be simpler with psir but as far as i know i think it also has a current affairs component i think you should talk to someone who is teaching psir a bit more clearly that these are my strengths this is what i don't like in the exam and then you can maybe figure out what you want to do with this because geography i'm not much aware but you should talk to people who belong to both these options i also mean teachers and then see which test series can you stick with it. Also, I want to tell you, just because you've done political science, it doesn't mean that you can't change to geography. There's no rule like that, but you need to figure out syllabus, um, PYQs, test series, and talk to someone about what is easier for you. Because I had done computer science and I wanted to migrate to anthropology because I liked the subject. Um, so that's what I want to tell you. Okay. Thank you so much for your service. Okay. For essay and ethics, okay, so essay and ethics will be a very big mark differentiator because it makes you individual, as you asked me. Uh, they will differentiate you from GS papers. So first, when it comes to ethics, uh, you can get basic notes from anywhere in the market. Maybe you're attending classes also, so keep those in hand. Then go to PYQs. PYQs, you will have what is emotional intelligence, what are components. Sit down, write everything, two pages only. Keep that ready, add it from your notes. After you've done that, go online, find examples, your own examples. Uh, someone maybe, I know a lot of people quote Dhoni for uh, emotional intelligence. So my point is find true examples that you like and quote them in the paper. Write anything, okay? Get it from toppers copies maybe or get it from the net. So your answer should have introduction, uh, two-page answer with examples. Most important thing for ethics. Keep this ready for all topics. Just follow one topic to the next that you can do for ethics. And then case studies for ethics which are very important for practicing because they are getting bigger and bigger also as the papers come by. A case studies, uh, try to do them, you're giving 24? Okay, so case studies, try to do them after uh, you finish this part A. This is part A where you have answer writing and part B of case studies. Try to do them after this because in case studies, there is a process to it. You circle the important problems in the question and you make a note of it, that's fine. But try to put part A things in this also, like try to write emotional intelligence and all of this. Match both of these two things together. Now when it comes to essay paper, again go to PYQs, take down the topics, take 15 minutes and write on your own. What, how, how will you write this essay? Before that, look at the question booklet. It has, I think, 12 pages. 
that's how much you'll be filling in the exam also much lesser than that keep that structure ready you have to fill only this much you should have introduction a flow to the essay and also an ending so make it very technical keep the pages ready and then the dimensions every essay will have many dimensions it's not just social political economic it's argumentative dimensions because philosophy topics are coming you need to ask why how when a lot of these questions so keep that ready try to use 15 minutes for 2 months on every topic and be like okay what will i write in each paragraph how will i picture it after that start writing full essays this is what i did it helped me a lot and then through this process you will go online find more value addition uh, that you have a lot of toppers talking about different things online also putting uh, geeta or all of this that you can add on your own but the process begins like this 15 minutes of your internal thinking then start writing it together and then you will have a body of really good content which you can apply in the real exam what not to study pyqs is my answer for that very clearly that's my answer um every topic has a set, has a core these are the five six questions which they can ask and they ask in rotation like like i told him even from your newspapers you should know what you should not study so make a list of that uh, for example in history you don't have modern history they ask you charter act so study that don't study unnecessary points 20 points under 1833 act is not needed just five six are important they will not ask you beyond that you get what i mean so whatever is in your sources is completely correct go to pyqs and get a very good idea if something extra is coming go back and see have they asked this don't have they asked this theme before if they haven't don't waste your time doing that now because in the exam your pyqs will be repeated majorly so do that even for mains just see what they're asking further so go to that and then you'll have a good idea about what you need to study or not yes how many how many hours do you study how many hours do you study for not see that's what i mean the problem with this question is all of us probably are going through i also went through we want to put in 16 hours a day and just keep studying studying but it's very tough to be effective throughout the day is it not it's not easy to be effective throughout the day so i have read that 6 to 7 hours of effective study is very important maybe you can apply that or you can study throughout the day as per your own pace and keep good breaks in the middle a lot of people follow pomodoro techniques and they have study with me videos online perhaps a lot of you do that does anyone do that pomodoro technique a study with me online no these are some youtube channels where um, just type study with me and they studying alongside you so maybe that can ingrain some sort of discipline you can do that also but there can never be an answer to how many hours i should study it cannot be one or two but um, it should be productive 6 7 at least i feel with good breaks in the middle anyone else yeah you share some strategies for 2025 prelims uh, and you are attending classes already and they've begun they have begun right the classes about to complete okay so which means you finished your syllabus basic syllabus you study and like i was telling him you have to add value addition to this now go to current affairs add value addition from newspapers maybe that you can apply in your gs papers also so do that that's your gs portion now you should start practicing your static papers also uh, modern history 100 questions polity do that and get practice from that okay do that paper and then you can do full papers much later on for a bit but i think you should focus on ethics essay and optional right now because you have some time for 25 so focus on those papers get your pyqs ready maybe slot uh, half a day or 3 4 days for mains and then two days for prelims and do something of that sort finish your um, optional ethics and essay in the next few months maybe you can take 6 7 months and finish them thoroughly with good test answer writing and all of that they will definitely fetch you a good score and then when you start revising for prelims prelims should happen side by side no doubt when you start doing only prelims then also take a look at mains for 2 3 months and then do only prelims after that does it make sense the point is prelims you should not lose practice but also prioritize three good papers and then do prelims and mains and then only prelims yes you are asking yeah, uh, so what are you doing you guys were talking about uh, examiner's mindset yes yes and how to use it yes examiner's mindset i did speak about it in a in a video examiner's mindset is what it means what is the examiner keeping in mind he is asking you the concept that's what i told him the concept is question go to the pyqs and that's how you will know that he is asking 
what are the sources of pollution? He'll give so many, so many. He wants you to know that there are many sources of pollution, for example. So go to PYQs and understand that. If there's no book on examiner's mindset, but generally by PYQs and practicing test series, you'll understand that much better. Okay. Uh, anyone else? Yes? Do you want to ask? Yes? You're giving 25? Or? 24. 24, okay. Of course, actually I shared marks with someone who claimed to have a very bad writing also. So he also felt it was his writing was a problem and we got the same score last year as well. So bad writing, okay, maybe it will give you something but it's not a game changer that you will never clear the exam. It is not like that because the examiner will know even if he has so-called bad writing, he has some concept clarity and that you need to focus on much more. You understand? So start using tools like diagrams for example, draw more maps, draw bigger maps, show more things diagrammatically, flow charts, uh, use caps much more. My writing is also not very good actually because it's very rounded so I felt maybe it's not very clear so I would do the same thing. Use caps lock, leave spaces in the middle, underlining. These things are very nice way to masquerade bad writing if you say. But don't think it's not at all in your favor, only good writing <laughs> comes. It's not like that, not everyone has very good writing if you see topper's copies, right? So don't think it's the only way out, but if you feel like it's a bottleneck for you, then please do caps lock, focus more on presentation. It will definitely help you. I know a lot of people who have cleared with very bad writing. Uh, I think you heard it off? Yes. Language people? My language people? My, I, I, I took Hindi and uh, I think I, I practiced. There's a procedure for language paper. Generally, you start with the essay, you write pressy, and then you write all of this. So I think I practiced only in the, in the week between the two uh, optional and the GS. I did that, but if you feel like your language is not very strong, while you do mains preparation, every two weeks try to brush up on your language paper. Just get the vocabulary right first for basic things like government, a lot of this. So try to do basic essay writing, it'll be possible. Language paper is not a big challenge. Focus on it if you think it's not okay for you. Uh, you had it up? Oh yes. Yes, that um, they are testing knowledge directly, right? They've changed the pattern. Also, if it is very tough for you, it's tough for everyone in that pattern. Nobody will know the exact answer. It's very hard to tell. In those questions, what you should be doing is trying to eliminate at least two options and then you attempt it that way. You understand what I'm saying? Uh, and if, see, the paper is like that, generally the cutoff has also decreased by a lot, so don't worry about it, but try to eliminate two questions and again go back and see how can I improve my thinking in that process. You will never be able to get the right answer though because it's very tough to get the right actual answer, right? Try to eliminate at least. Answer will be only to only three. At least that you will know. And then um, based on your other paper questions, how much risk you want to take, you can decide in the exam. Are you an adult? Uh, yes. 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 Hindi vocabulary? Uh, Yes, so um, I did have a book online on essay book, just a very simple book on essays. It had very basic essays. I did work on that. I would round the words I thought I would use. Uh, but also in the exam, it will not be a very big challenge. You could easily write an essay in English in your mind and translate in Hindi. A lot of the words, uh, you would have prepared for the essay paper also. So you will have the same content anyways. I, I remember uh, there was an essay on challenges of AI. So I just wrote, imagine in English and wrote the same in Hindi. It won't be very tough. But since you have some time, take a book, essay book, and just circle the important uh, vocabulary, uh, meaning of government, policy, a lot of these things. And just take it step by step. That you can do. Always also give uh, practice papers 
at home it is online uh, pressy paper you have to practice and see how it's working translation it is very doable but if you buy a book it will also be helpful to you i did that yes Notes consult. Yes, I had a notes problem because, like I said, I uh, I did go to a lot of sources. I didn't feel in happy to just do one, but uh, what I did is I took all the sources. I just wrote the topic and I wrote three points, just the concept clarity, like he said. If you're attending classes, keep your class notes side and make very short notes for prelims that this is the topic, these are the factual notes. For mains, every topic will have its own uh, structure of notes. Defense will have diagrams, maybe some two, three points. Modern history uh, will have just basic notes or something. So make it very short. If you see toppers notes also online, it will be one big page of just very small, 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 small bits. And these are ways to recollect. You are not reproducing notes. Notes are there to help you to associate two different topics. So keep that in mind all the time. Try not to have very big notes. I made that mistake. Like I said, I changed that between two attempts. Try to keep your notes very small. Uh, but one way is you need to revise your big notes first of all. When you revise it, go to a fresh copy and write three words that you thought of. Just that. Those are small consolidated notes. You're not copying hand to hand. It's more of active recall than making it short for someone else. Right? Try to do that practice. I think that's the philosophy of consolidated notes. And for the last minute short notes? Last minute short notes? Yeah. Um, I did not have those last minute short notes because you don't have so much time to make so many notes, right? Uh, but your final notes should have your uh, PYQ points, maybe mistakes you've made in your uh, test series. Please keep that. And also your uh, consolidated notes. Just keep these three things. I didn't do a last minute notes thing because I didn't have time for that. Will consolidation have fear of, fear of missing out some important points? You will always feel that. You will feel that. Let it go. Because your big fat notes will have that point. Revise, that's what I'm saying. Keep revising it. It's in your mind somewhere. Uh, and then recollect three, four points and just keep it with you. They, that's the concept I was telling him about. It's also concept means the most important thing that comes to your mind when the topic is there. Okay. Yes? Essay topics in GS paper. In education. essay paper? Yes. yes. Or about the education status. Like, sh should we give more uh, factual data in writing the essays or how different we should be? Okay. So uh, that's a good question. What he's saying is when they ask you a GS-like topic in essay, what do you do? Do you write factual? Do you write it like a mains answer, basically? That's what they're asking. It should be a mix of both. It should look like an essay. An essay is not a mains answer. Essay means you're taking the reader through a process or journey. You're giving some sort of introduction. You're arguing that this is OK, this is not OK, and finally, this is the conclusion. Mains answers are not like that. Mains answers are like notes. This is my exact way. In two pages, examiner will know what it is. But essay, they're reading it through. So you will have facts. You will have structured arguments, facts. You will have that. But you should also have flowery language, as they say. You should always have both. Have a better introduction. Maybe you're writing a story or something, and then end it with something else. So have a mix of both. But don't let go of uh, UNESCO fact or something like that in essay. Uh, keep both. Always keep both. Uh, yes. PYQ analysis? Mm. So when you are, so you, you have notes for these present classes, right? Open the same uh, in your PYQ booklet and then start doing it. Can you answer it or not? You will definitely answer because you've studied it that way. Now look at the question and the concept. Have they asked you about pottery? Have they asked you about inv invaders now? Have they asked you about something else? It's not just answers that you need to study. You need to study what topic they're asking from and keep their facts in mind, OK? Uh, so what I would do is I would see the topic. I would do the questions make notes of it, and then see, OK, this, if this question comes, and analyze like this. They may not ask you the same question again, but there will be a question on something else, IVC versus Aryans, or something related to it. So they won't ask you the same things, but the concept they will ask. PYQ means an analyze the concepts, and the examiner mindset. What are they checking you in this? Right? Um, there will be five, six things. I think you will be able to manage when you see it. PYQ. Um, anyone else? What was my CSAT? Um, CSAT, mm, so I had practiced, I had a basic book on formulae, uh, ratio proportion. This I had practiced a bit. So I kept, that was my first step, understanding the concepts. Now, second thing is I went to papers from 2013, 14, 15. I would do that in two hours, and I would uh, practice that way. But 
the strategy is something I focused on. What it means is you have two parts, right? You have English and you have maths. So you need to make a very quick judgment in the exam that which, which looks a bit simpler for me to do. Don't get caught in the trap of doing one question for five minutes and then losing time on the others. This will really cost you a whole attempt. Okay, so first is basic concepts, practice for a few days, go back to your um, uh, 2015 papers, do them in two hours, and once you do them, strategize. Is this simple? Should I do English only? Should I do only maths? When to do what? Some people do five English paragraphs and then do five maths, they go in the flow. I would do first maths and then English, or first English, then maths. So I had a strategy, work on that and apply that in the same in the exam. That you can do. Uh, you had a question? Same, okay. Anyone else? So this year they postponed the prelims from May to June. And the gap between prelims and May is a bit. Yes. So if you were in our situation, when would you start preparing for May? Would it be after the prelims or before the prelims? I would have done memes for a very long time because I was comfortable with prelims. But today, if you're writing, you should do only prelims now. You have two months, right, from today, so do only prelims, don't miss out on that. And after this, hopefully you've done ethics, essay and optional, you will be able to manage GS later on. But ideally, since we got this news in March, if I'm not wrong, we could have done extra 15, 20 days of mains only. It would not have been three, four months or something of that sort. But today, please focus only on prelims. Don't worry about mains, forget mains completely. Mains is very doable if you have GS concept ready and three papers are sorted. Anyone else? Anyone else? Any other question? Maybe something you uh, something that's bothering you about the exam. Everyone's feeling good now. Prepare <laughs> to, to study. Yeah. No further questions. Well, in case you, you can always reach out to me. Uh, I will leave my number. Maybe on social media also. Uh, any doubts you have about optional, anything else, do let me know. Always happy to help. And thank you so much for having me offline uh, and online as well for all your lovely doubts. I hope it has helped everyone. No one has any other question? Sure? Don't be shy, it's okay. Think of it as practice of personality test. Ma'am? Yes, online? Good evening, ma'am. Uh, we have a solitude journey in this UPC clearing exam. Uh, since many candidates have a different journey in clearing this exam, we are very individualistic. So, what makes it your way by clearing this exam? What made me because sorry? You, you are not mingled with hmm. because you are not mingled with many peer, peer group of yes, people. Yes, yes, yes. So, what's the difference and what, which makes it worth while hmm. by clearing this exam? Ma'am? That is true though. Uh, like you said, I did not mingle with a lot of people at all. I felt that. My sort of personality while I study, I would not have done justice to a peer group and neither would they have helped me as much. In many ways, it is a bottleneck because I wasn't able to share and get tips, let's say. Um, I, Like I said, I think I work better, I study better when I'm more focused without distractions. So that kept me going and I also was confident that hopefully someday I will get into service maybe. Uh, but having said that, uh, it varies from everyone. If you feel like a good peer group is important, please stick with it. And your company can make it or change it. Because they say that you are a product of the six closest people around you. Right? Um, keep that in mind. But what kept me going, I, I think confidence that someday I would do it. Maybe it was a placebo. Uh, but, I, but if you envision it, it's probably possible. So I think that's what kept me going. Thank you for sharing us. Oh, thank All you. The All the best to you. <laughs> okay. Ma'am, is there anything we should do and we should not do before appearing for the interview? Interview? Yes. Yes. You mean preparation? <laughs> In life, you mean? Preparation, right? So, um, for the personality test, like I said, the articulation practice is a very important thing. The more time you had to articulate, articulation means if you, if I ask you a question, you will hit it on spot and you will have clarity about what I want to say and you say it better. It doesn't mean vocabulary, accent, not all of this. It means how clear are you with thoughts. So maybe from today you can start reading editorials and think about it and speak to the mirror and improve your language. It will always help. 
at the same time you can focus on your pace your clarity of words maybe if you have uh, improve your vocabulary also is a very good exercise read more books uh, in good limits because you may not have so much time with gs preparation what you should not do is um it's very easy to say but have a lot of stress that okay i am not going to make it they will not like me uh, what should i dress am i fit for the job this lack of confidence will not help you in the exam because you are bare in the uh, interview they know they can see through you but they will make you feel very comfortable and don't be in company that is making you anxious okay they have studied so much and you have not uh, they will make you pick a lot of groups home state groups and so and so you'll always feel like i have studied less so try to keep like i said economity sitte pragya even if they have more sources your preparation is very good the way it is so keep confidence before interview you need confidence even if it's false it's okay but confidence is very important okay yes okay um this is tied to questions like concept and short notes the second you see a question you will have five six points immediately that come to your mind okay if they say what are the problems in education i will know i'll start with this statistic i will know the problems are socio economic there is women issues structural teaching absenteeism these points will come to my mind in the end i will see okay this is how i want to repackage put a nice quotation or something in the end and this has come only through practice it is not born talent or something that you can get immediately okay so when you make short notes you revise your consolidated facts newspapers and all of this it will come to your mind you should sit with an answer in essay and mains take 20 minutes and say okay this is how i would write and then it becomes very easy practice but it's five six points that immediately jump to you and your hand will just take over that's how it is anyone else okay oh hello ma'am yes mm-hmm. So you told us about uh, you should be very uh, like uh, confident about the static subjects like quality, geography, environment. So what were your uh, basic studies of these subjects? Like uh, should we start with NCERTs or should we go with standard books? So how should we actually start a preparation for GS? So you are giving twenty four attempt or twenty five? Twenty five now. Okay. Since you're giving twenty five, you have some time now. i will suggest you begin with ncrts always because the language is very simple and that is the concept clarity it's it's very clearly lucidly given in these books so start with ncrts but don't spend 8 9 months on finish your entire plethora only in ncrts go very basic make very small notes from it and then your gospel will be only the uh, books online the books that are always online so please start with ncrts get a very good basic idea of the concept and then go to your coaching books i would suggest you do it this way i did it this way it helped me a lot okay ma'am okay. thank you so much okay welcome yes economics so um economics uh, just a second please uh so economics take a look at pyqs there are always eight to nine topics which are repeated like rupee sliding uh repo rate bank rate these topics keep coming all the time and you should have clarity about this the same thing will be asked in different ways and what they teach you in class keep a note of those things and keep a notes ready if you want to practice concepts further i would take up um, economics test papers and try to apply only this in those test papers they will have a lot of current affairs some banking information from somewhere that is not what you should be testing exactly only find questions which are core concepts bank rate uh, rupee sliding currency sliding inflation these topics will repeat eight nine topics will only be coming usually for economics try to focus on that um and see the news online economic survey economic review they give you a trend of the way things are happening it doesn't since you giving 24 25 since so a very good time to read not every line but look at the graphs of these books alone how is the trend going underneath the graph there be one para explaining everything you will know right um, there is increase of repo rates all over the world now inflation is decreasing or increasing this trend you need to have of the way things are working that current affairs is usually asked so i would suggest you in, churn out these important concepts then test them in your test papers only these concepts don't worry about marks now for economics alone i'm saying uh, and um, please read economic survey and economic review i'll help you okay thank you yes yes 
अच्छे दिन हाँ हाँ मैंने भी नहीं पढ़ा था टेंथ ट्वेल्थ के बाद हाँ सो ही इज आस्किंग दैट आफ्टर टेंथ एंड ट्वेल्थ इफ यू हैव लेट कॉन ऑफ अ सब्जेक्ट लैंग्वेज पेपर शुड यू स्टार्ट फ्रॉम द ग्रामर फ्रॉम द बेसिक्स और शुड यू डू दैट आपको ये बताती हूँ कि आप एक बार क्वेश्चन पेपर देख लीजिएगा कि आपको कैसा लग रहा है वो बिल्कुल कुछ समझ नहीं आ रहा हिंदी अगर आप बोलते हैं तो वो वाली बहुत है ग्रामर चलता नहीं वो हाँ आई नो बट नहीं पर आप क्वेश्चन पेपर देखिए एक बार देखिए ऐसे आपको लिखना है ठीक है आप उसके लिए बुक ले लीजिए वोकेबलरी मार्क करके अब दिमाग पर रख लीजिए कि ऐसे लिखना है ऐसे का हो जाएगा प्रेसी राइटिंग आती है वो बहुत आसान होती है वो आपको ऑनलाइन देख के आप कर लेंगे ग्रामर का जो होता है मुहावरे आते हैं वो भी आपको बुक से मिल जाएगा तो आपको ग्रामर शुरू से सीखना बिल्कुल उसकी ज़रूरत नहीं है एक बार पेपर देख लीजिएगा वोकेबलरी देख लीजिएगा अगर आपको लग रहा है कि क्रिया मुझे समझ नहीं आ रही फिर कर लो बट आई थिंक पेपर देखेगा इतना इसको बीच बीच में देखोगे ऐसे प्रेसी ट्रांसलेशन पर ग्रामर शुरू से मत कीजिएगा आपका टाइम वेस्ट हो जाएगा मेरे हिसाब से हाँ 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 नहीं इतनी हिंदी बहुत ज़्यादा शुद्ध हिंदी आपको जरूरत नहीं है उसकी बेसिक वोकेबल ले लीजिए हाँ 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 ऐसे पढ़िए फिर आप या कुछ लोग एक्चुअली हिंदी का पेपर पढ़ते थे अगर आपको वो करना है वो भी कर सकते हैं आप मैंने नहीं किया था वो तो मुझे नहीं पता बट आप ऑनलाइन कुछ भी देख सकते हैं आप अपनी हिंदी ऐसे डेवलप कीजिएगा कि आप पढ़ लो आए मुझे लगता है कि एक महीने में आपका हो जाएगा ऐसे कि आप बोल सकते हैं पेपर देख लीजिएगा एक बार फिर आप वोकेबलरी और पेपर पढ़ लीजिए आई थिंक मेरे हिसाब से मुझे याद नहीं है बट आई थिंक अरिहंत की एक बुक थी ऑनलाइन ऐसा कुछ देखा था मैंने मैंने उसको देखा था हिंदी के लिए ही इज आस्किंग हाउ डिड यू हैंडल डिसकरेजमेंट फ्रॉम योर फ्रेंड्स एंड फैमिली एनी वन एज एन आंसर फॉर दिस अवॉइड कट ऑफ Cut off those people whom you think will give you any amount of distraction from your life. They are not worth it. They don't. You don't need them now. See, the exam is very tough. Uh, it's very competitive. We all know that. But don't keep them in your life now. Like I said, you need only confidence, a lot of courage. It is very much doable if you just keep that. Um, don't keep such people in life. Don't don't <laughs> cut them off and be rude. But I'm just saying, they're not important. What they say is not necessary at all. They don't know. They're not given the exam. You know what you're going through. Maybe you clear it. You know, cut them off. Okay. Ah, uh, someone had a doubt. Yes. So we can maximize this so that it will be easy for them. Okay. Want me to read out, sir? No, no. Just you can answer. There are few questions. From here, sir. Ah. You can select question. I'll do that. I'll do that. Sensible question. You can answer. I'll do that, sir. You were saying? Yes, in my third attempt. Sorry? No, I have not been. Because in my um, third attempt, I wrote the exam again for this attempt. So when you clear prelims, you don't. You can skip FC. So I have not been yet. So you cannot win. This year maybe. Anyone else? Okay, I just I would take some doubts online. Um, Vishwa A says, "How should my daily routine be?" Anyone can answer that. Someone wants to share the daily routine. <laughs> That's my point. The point is everyone's routine is very different, but I suggest you slot your day in some ways. Better to start with newspaper reading. Have um, in these two months, I'll talk about it. Read the newspaper, but don't take very big notes. You may not have the same issues in the current coming paper. Please read the newspaper, revise your uh, prelim static content. Maybe take a break and then revise something in CSAT, and in the evening take some other subject, and then at home revise current affairs. Some of these days, leading up to the next two days, you may have to give uh, two-hour papers for prelims. That day, the morning slot of uh, current um, 
prelim study, don't do that. Give two hours papers. And some other day, give CSAT. One of these days, please do both together. You should have a experience of giving two papers on the same day. So this is how I would um, suggest you break your daily routine. And I also suggest start sleeping on time now uh, because it is a morning paper. If you're a night owl, then it's good to fix your sleep cycle now. Um, and there is a question that says, what is ready for UPSC CSC prelims according to you? Can anyone explain that to me? What is UPSC CSC prelims according to you? Yes, that's what she's asking, or he. <laughs> They're asking, um, how do I know I have confidence? It's coming back to his question. How do I know if my strategy is right or wrong? You may never know, right? But trust me, I will tell you a few things. If you're doing this for the next two months, maybe you are perfectly ready. You're revising static very day every day. You are giving test papers. You're making note of your careless mistakes. You are not doing not is that mistake, what is not correct, what is correct. You're not mixing up articles. You're noting down careless mistakes on your own. You have seen PYQs very clearly. You know that this question can come in this format, that preparation you have. In CSAT, you're almost thorough with your maths and English, and you're finishing the paper comfortably in two hours. Only these four things, if you do, it'll be good. I also want to add revising current affairs, but we can't predict so easily what comes in the paper for current affairs. If you have time, these five things. If you do this, uh, it will be very comfortable for you in the two hours. Beyond this, nobody can claim uh, what's going to happen. Um, so also be positive. I think that way you'll be much prepared to apply all of this. Mm. OK, so one question is, by how do I go about revision when I now only feel like I have finally sort of understood the exam, especially within this limited time frame? You have two months now. It is not very less time, by the way. It is a lot of time. You still have time to give now. Uh, revise again and again. Because it seems like you feel like you have much lesser time for the exam. It's not like that. Two months is actually enough to do very well for the exam. Like I said, repeat the five things. Uh, static, practice, PYQs, um, CSAT, and current affairs. Just these five things every day. And it's not limited. You have a lot of time. If you use it judiciously. Also. Um, I think about a week running before, or two, three days before the exam, try not to load yourself with too many tests. This is something you shouldn't do for a burnout. Uh, so try to revise your important topics from polity, like parliament chapter or something else. Take selective revision. Uh, that will help you two days before the exam. OK, when should I start giving full length mocks for this year prelims? OK, uh, have you all started full length mocks? Everyone has started? Who hasn't started? It's OK. Raise your hands. OK? And everyone else has started. That's completely fine now, because now you can begin to give uh, full length mocks. Uh, maybe you have finished uh, static portions of your basic test series, right? Polity English. You can still do it now. Two months is enough. It's not a problem. But I suggest you can start giving it now. OK? Uh, I think that I'm done with online doubts. So done, so. Anyone else? The burnout? Uh, anyone else who is facing burnout? Can someone explain burnout to me? Be loud, please. OK, he's saying external pressures. Anyone else? Sorry? Frustration. Anyone else? Yes, exhausted. Anyone else? It's a mix of all of this, right? Like you feel exhausted, you don't want to study. Your body is perhaps studying, but your mind is in fatigue or something of that sort. Uh, but it will happen in the exam. You need to find a support system who will motivate you and tell you that this is OK. You need to take a break then, eat something you like, do some exercise, and tell yourself this exam is not the end all and be all of everything. Reduce the pressure. Reduce the stress. Take out people who discourage you, a lot of this. And then I think it's a good solution. But accept that it happens to everyone. You will have the fatigue. What did I do? Mm. Boxing. <laughs> I took up, <laughs> took up boxing. I took up cubing. I did a lot of these uh, very immersive activities so that I didn't. I felt like I was applying, distracting myself completely. So you can take up hobbies. Maybe find a good support system that can also help. Anyone else? Yeah. Yes. Okay, 
I'm done, everyone. Thank you so much for giving me your time. And I'm sure you will do very well. Just remember, no anxiety, no impatience. Don't be fearful of failure. Please be internalized. You will all clear this exam, definitely. There is no one else who deserves it more than you. And you can always reach out to me. Maybe sir can felicitate that also. Uh, maybe social media or anything. Okay, all the best, everyone. Thank you so much.